All right, so it's 9.40, so let's get started. So I'm Brian Doherty. I'm one of the TAs of 355. Um, so what these recitations are basically uh, lecture help sessions, and we're basically going to go over a few extra problems to solidify the ideas that you've seen in lecture. So um, I'm going to attempt to record these. I don't know if I can in general, but if I can, I'll let you know of a YouTube playlist that I've set up so that you can see all the past recitations if you want more practice. So, any other questions before we get started? Uh, well, so, we're going to practice the ones on the handouts that I've given you. Uh, you can ask if you want some help on quiz questions during, uh, I guess, during recitation as well as office hours. If you have any questions about those. Any other questions? Okay, so what, what was the main thing that we've been talking about in lecture? Yeah, these things called DFAs, right? So can anyone tell me what a DFA actually stands for? What are the three letters in the acronym stand for? Yeah, these are the deterministic uh, finite automaton, right? So what is a DFA then? So how do I like tell you a DFA? Like if I have some DFA in my mind and I want it to convey to you in some way, how do I tell you tell it to you? Uh, if I'm in a state and I get an input, I'm guaranteed to go into a different state. Okay, so some kind of state input kind of thing. But what else do, would I need to tell you? Ah, so what was suggested is this kind of formal idea of telling you exactly what the states are and as well as all the other uh, five parts. So we need to specify five things. Q, sigma, delta, Q, zero, F. So what were these five parts? So what does Q actually stand for? States. states. Can, well, what is this thing actually? It's something containing states, but what is the thing itself? It's a set of states, right? It's not just a list of states, it's a set of states. Isn't it an infinite list or a finite list? Finite. finite list, yeah. So finite list of states. What was this uh, uh, sigma thing? Finite. Uh, again, a finite, oh, uh, finite set, sorry, not a list. Finite set. And what do we call this thing? The, the alphabet, right? So that was the name of the thing we gave it. What is this uh, delta thing? Transfer function. A, a transition function, right? And we know that it's a total function, which means what? It's a total function, which means what? Right, there's a defined output for every single pair of state with an input symbol. Right, that was what was suggested even earlier. Right, so now that we have the first three, what's the fourth one? This Q0 thing. That's what's called the start state of the machine, right? And what do we know about Q0? Well, it's the start state, but what do we know about relation to other things? Q0 a member of sigma F. It's a member of Q, right? So Q0 is in Q. Alright, then what is this F thing? It's a set of final states. So set of final states. And then how do how do we know F in relation to Q? It's some set of states, but is it different or is it a subset? It's a subset, right? So we know that F is a subset of Q. Can F be equal to Q? Yeah. What would that mean? Just so accepts everything. Then every single state is uh, a final state. Can F be the empty set? 
No. Yeah. That, what would that correspond to? So nothing's a final state. Right? There's no final state in the machine at all. All right. Any questions about that? Just simple review. So I have a question. Yeah. So this is, this is a finite automation. If you don't have a final state, how can it uh, be finite? Uh, which what part of <coughs> so, so we are talking about the finite automation. So if we don't have any, if a final set is empty, so how the automation can be finite? Well, well, this well f is finite because it's a subset of a finite set. Oh. Yeah, it, it's it's not larger than this finite set. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Any other questions? Okay. So let's actually get to the examples because I think that's what would be most useful. So I have this DFA, it has three states. And the first question says, write out a complete formal description of this DFA. So how would I do that? How would I tell you this DFA? Something kind of formal related, right? So what would I have to tell you? I have to tell you Q, sigma, delta, everything, right? Okay, so what is Q here? Well, first of all, Q is a set, so we must write that, that it is a set here. So what are the things in this set? Q0, Q1, Q2, the states of the machine, right? So Q is the set containing 0, Q1, Q2. All right, so we got that part down. So what is this, what is sigma here? Well, let's see. What do we have to guarantee about the symbols exiting a particular state? Well, since it's a deterministic finite automaton, every single uh, member of sigma must have a transition out of that state. Well, if we look at any state in here, we see, well, let's just say look at Q1, for example. There is an A coming out of it and a B coming out of it. Are there any other characters in the input alphabet? No, because if there were, then there would be a transition for that. So what is the alphabet here? A, B, A, B. A and B, yes. Remember, it's a set, so it's the characters A and B. Do we not include the empty character? Uh, the empty character, by convention, is not part of the it's input alphabet. Okay, so I'll skip the transition function for now. So what is the start state of this machine? Q0. Q0. And how do I, how is it indicated here? It's this incoming arrow from nowhere, right? So Q0 is equal to Q0. So this just means that Q0 of the machine is the start state of the machine. All right. What is F here, the set of final states? Q1. Q1, right? Because how, do, how is it indicated on the diagram? It's with the double circle, yeah. So F is, is it a set? Yes. So it's a set containing Q1. Good. I might need more of it. Any questions on those four parts? Have I told you everything? What have I forgot? Ah, the transition function. Good. So, how, what is an easy way to, for me to tell you the transition function? With the table, yeah. So, there are several ways you can do this, but the one I find easiest is with the table. So, down here, down the vertical column, I guess, the, the rows are going to correspond to states of the machine. And the columns are going to correspond to the symbols. So we know that the states of the machine are the things in Q. So we'll just write them down here. Q0, Q1, Q2. And we know the input alphabet of the DFA, which is just AB. I should separate those. All right, so let's just say I wanted to fill in the, the entry right here. How would I figure that out? Say the entry right here. 
Yeah, I figure out where I go from state Q0 on A. Well, where do I go on A? To Q0, yeah. So in this entry, I'm gonna write Q0. Simple enough. Q0 on B, where do I go? Q1, right? Because I just followed the arrow. Q1 on A, where do I go? Q2, good. Q1 on B, where do I go? Back to Q0. Q2 on A, where do I go? Q1, via the transition. And finally, Q2 on B goes where? Back to Q0. How do I know that this is an actual DFA and I'm just not deceiving you in some way? Every entry is filled. Every entry is filled. Can any entry have two entries in it? No. No, because it's a function, right? And every, every entry has to have something in there because it's a total function, right? There's no uh, transition lefts uh, not there. Any questions on that? All right, so let's do part B. So part B says, what is the computation on input A, A, B, B? So what is a computation again? It's the sequence of states that happens, well, how do I determine it on this input? It's just some sequence of states, or is it a specific sequence, sequence of states? It's the sequence of It's the sequence of states that I visit when I feed this input to this machine, right? So I gotta figure out what states I visit when I feed this input A, A, B, B. So I guess I'm gonna do it down here. So if I have the input A, A, B, B, so what's the sequence of states that I visit? Well, what's the first one? Q0. Q0. So where do, when do I visit that? Before or after I read the first character? Before, right? So because that's the start state of the machine. When I start up the machine, I start in that state. All right, so now how do I figure out where I go uh, what's the next state in the sequence? Well, I figure out, once I'm in this state and on this input character, the very first character, I figure out where I can go on that input. How do I figure that out? I look up in where? Transition function, right? It says, I'm in Q0 right now, and I'm going to read an A off the input. So where do I figure that out? It's in the transition table. So what does the transition table tell me from, from state Q0 on A, where do I go? Q0, right. So after I've read the A, I'm in state Q0. All right. Now we're in Q0 and we read an A. I think we all know now that that is Q0 again. So I'm gonna visit Q0 here. So now, what, am, what do I look up in the table? Q0 on B. Q0 on B, right? And what does the transition table tell me? The view of Q1. Is, uh, I go to Q1, good. So I go to Q1 here. And so now what do I have to look up in the table? Uh, Q1 on B. Q1 on B. So what does the table tell me? one on B goes Q0, yeah. So I come back to Q0. Am I done? Yeah, because I just read the last input character. And when I read the last input character, what happens? I either accept or not, and the machine just stops there. So do I accept that input? No, how do I tell that? It's not a final state. Where do you look up uh, to find whether Q0 is a final state? In the set of final states. Good. Any questions on this first question? Okay, so now we're gonna try to do the opposite type question where I give you a language and I want to design a DFA for it. So the language I'm interested in is this input W 
has at least three zeros. I only want to accept the strings that have at least three zeros in them somewhere. Okay? So when you, whenever you have a question like this, the main thing is how do I find a strategy to make a DFA for it or whatever machine we're talking about? How do I actually make this thing? So if you see at least three zeros, what do you think is a example string that we want to accept? What's the simplest string you can think of that is in this language? Zero, 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 right? So I have to have the, uh, the string zero, zero, zero accepted. So a good strategy, and it will work, is let's start from the start state and just force zero, zero, zero to be accepted, and then we'll fill in all the other transitions later, okay? So this is an idea. So I'm gonna have my start state Q0, and I'm just gonna write three zero transitions in a row because I want to accept that string. And because the machine's deterministic, I have to have this path in there. So let's make a path of length three with three zeros on the transitions. So my zero, so this is Q2, Q3, and what do I know about Q3? It has to be a final state because I have to accept this string. Good. Is there any reason why I call these Q0, Q1, Q2, Q3? Well, there's, I, I couldn't name these anything I want, but is there a specific reason why I call them this? How many zeros have I read here? Zero. How many have I read here? How many have I read here? How many have I read here? Three. So the, uh, often when I make uh, large DFAs, it's really helpful to tell what uh, to put names on the states to mean what you want them to mean, right? I want this to mean I've seen zero zeros, one zero, two zeros, three zeros. What does the three actually mean here? Do I care if I see another zero? No, so what does the three actually mean? What if I saw four zeros? At least three zeros. At least three zeros. So what should I do in Q3 on zero? I stay at the same state. Perfect. So now we figure out what every single transition does, what every single state does on zero. Am I done? No, well, what have I forgot? Uh, I forgot the one transitions, good. So, but is there anything you can figure out about the one transitions? If I see a one, does that change the number of zeros I've seen? No. Oh, okay. So what do you think the one transition should do? Stay at whatever state that they were. So they're all self-loop transitions, good. So if I am in Q0 and I see a one, I'm gonna loop back here because as long as I keep saying ones, I haven't seen a zero yet. Good. If I'm in here, I've seen one zero, but if I keep seeing ones, I haven't changed the number of zeros. Same reasoning here. So when this question comes up on a test, it's assuming that three zeros exist in the string and not in a row. So that when I first read that, I was like, three zeros in a row. Yeah, English is probably the worst language to use for this. Uh, I mean, I mean this to say that w, the number of occurrences of w uh, of zero in the string w is th at least three. So that's a more precise way of saying it. But I, I try to be short with the uh, the notation here. Like like here, I have contains the substring in there. It's not like it counts the number of things. But yeah, I, I see what you mean by that. Okay. But uh, I mean the number of occurrences of that is at least three. Any other questions? And I forgot this one transition here, where if I'm in Q3, I don't care what I see at all. If it's a zero or one, I don't care. Any questions about uh, this question? Questions about the question. Okay, so let's do question three. It says, uh, I want all the strings such that the string W contains the substring 010. 
So again, let's try to think of the simplest possible string that will be in this language. So what is that string? Zero, one, zero. I have to accept that string. So let's try to do a similar idea to what we just did. So I'm not, the names of the states aren't going to mean anything special here, but uh, we got we to gotta do a similar thing as we did there. So Q1, by the 1, Q2. And what do we know about Q3? It's a final state. So what do you think should be the meaning of these four states? This means I haven't seen anything of the 0, 1, 0 substring, if one exists. What do you think Q1 means? Should be. It, yeah, we've seen the first character of the substring that we want to see. We've seen a 0 in that order. What do you think Q2 should mean? We've seen a zero one in that order. Okay. What do you think Q three means? I've seen zero one zero. I've seen zero one zero in that sequence. Okay, in that order exactly. Once I get to Q three, what happens? I, I don't care, right? Because if it means that I've seen zero one zero, it already is in the language, so I don't care what happens afterwards. So what are the transitions on Q3 then? It, it should do a self loop on 0 and 1, right? Because I don't care what happens after uh, I get to Q3. Good. And so now our job is to fill in the rest of the transitions. So what transition have I left off of Q1? Uh, sorry, Q0. The, the 1 transition. So where do you think that goes? Well, Q0 in our mind should mean we haven't seen anything of the 0, 1, 0 string yet. So if I keep seeing 1s, where should I go? Back to Q0 because I haven't seen any more of the 0, 1, 0 substring. Okay. So this should loop back here. Q1, the one I've left off, is the 0 transition. So what do you think that should do? Well, if I see a zero in Q1, I, I should loop to myself. Why? Because I'm still continually seeing the beginning of the zero, one, zero substring, right? I'm still seeing the beginning of it, right? So I need to loop back to myself uh, from Q1 on the input zero to Q1. Good with that? Are we done? What one have I forgotten? Q2. Q2 on 1. So what do you think I should do on Q2 on 1? Q0. Well, let's think about it. If, I see it. if I'm in Q2, I've seen 0, 1 in that order. That, that's what we're trying to make Q2 be. So if I see another 1, I've seen 0, 1, 1 in that order. But that's not the substring that I want. Essentially, I should go back to Q0 because I've, uh, I've eliminated everything that I've seen before that possibly that could possibly be the substring that I wanted to see. So Q2 should go where on 1? Back to Q0, right? Because, well, let's think. If I go to Q3, that definitely won't work because then I'll see 0, 1, 1 in sequence. If I loop back to Q2, then that means I've seen 0, 1, with possibly more 1s with a 0, which is not what we want. We want exactly 0, 1, 0. If I go back to Q1, then that must mean that I could accept the string 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, which is definitely not what we want either. So I have to go back to Q0 here. OK? Everyone good with that? Any questions about any of that? OK, so now let's do the really, really cool example. So are we good with all this over here? I mean, I'm recording it, but. All right. So 
so it's amazing sometimes. Um, Dr. Coborn, uh, I don't share these with Dr. Coborn, so, but sometimes he mentions them in class anyway. Like he knows exactly what I'm going to do even though I didn't share with him, but I, I thought that was hilarious that he mentioned this one. So what is the language that I'm considering? It's all the strings in zero one star that uh, the binary representation of W is divisible by five. Okay, so I, I want to make a DFA to this thing. So how do you think I can go about doing that? You know, let's think about any arbitrary string at all in zero one sum. If I divide by five, what are the possible remainders? Well, it could be evenly divisible by five, so it's zero remainder. Could it be one remainder? Yeah. Yeah. Could it be two? Yeah. Could it be three? Yeah. Could it be four? Yeah. Could it be five? No. No. Well, well, I mean, technically it could, but that would be equivalent to saying that it's divisible by five again, right? So it could only the remainders could only be zero, one, two, three, or four. Is that a finite number of possibilities? But it's five, it's definitely finite. So what we should do is model each one of those as a state. That's what the, that's another strategy for making DFAs like this. All the possibilities of the that strings couldn't have with whatever you're looking at, try to make a state for each one of those and then figure out where the transitions go based on that. So I'm gonna have five states, one representing uh, remain zero, one with remainder one, two, three, and four. So I'm going to have state Q zero, Q one, Q two. Be prepared for a lot of crossings. Okay. All right. So I have the states now. So what are the other things that I need to specify about this DFA? The start state. So what should be the start state? Q0, right? Because if I haven't read anything, then the binary representation of nothing is zero. So and zero is divisible by five. So let's let Q0 be the start state. What is the set of final states? Well, let's see. The binary representation of W is divisible by five. So what's the remainder if something's divisible by five? Zero. Zero. So I think Q zero should be the only accept state, the only final state, right? Because I don't want remainder one, uh, two, three, or four, okay? So now the fun part, the transitions. So let's think about it. How many of you have done modular arithmetic of some kind? So a few of you. So this will be good practice for those of you who haven't. All right, so let's think about Q0 for a second. I gotta have a transition with zero. I gotta have a transition with one, right? I gotta have those. So what is Q0 representing? It represents what I've seen so far is divisible by five. Right, so if I have seen, uh, let's think of a number, one, zero, one. What number does that represent? Five. five, so that should be divisible by five. So if I read one, zero, one through this machine, I should end up back at Q zero. Right, that's what I should be able to do. What if I read a zero afterward? What number is that? How do you know? Because shifting left multiplies the number by two. So is this number divisible by five now? Yes. Yes. And how do we know that? It was divisible by five before. Just multiplying by two changes nothing about that fact. So where should Q0 go on zero? Back to Q0. Good. It's thinking. 
what is the possible, what happens if I have a number like this and I multiply it by two? That's all it really is. And now you say, well, you forgot the one transition. So let's think about this. We had five before, and I read a one now. What number is that? It's 11, right? It's 11 divisible by five. So I shouldn't go back to Q0 here. But where should I go? Q1, why? The remainder is one. Because I want to think about the remainders when, divis when divided by five. So I should go to Q1 on one. Good. Any questions about that? Let's do the other ones. Let's say I'm in Q1. What's a possible input that could get me to Q1? Yeah. 1011 works, or 1, or a bunch of possibilities. So let's think about this number now. If I read a 0 now, what number is this? 22. How do you know that? You multiply by 2. So what is the remainder when I divide this by 5? 2, right? Because it was remainder 1 before, but I multiply by 2. So now the remainder is 2. And so you can actually think of these as the remainders themselves instead of the number, and then think the remainder. So if I have remainder 1, and I multiply 1 by 2 mod 5, I should still end up at 2. So Q1 on 0 should go all the way over here to Q2. All right. If I have remainder 1, and I read a 1 afterward, where should I go? Q3. Q3. Why? Because it's just the 1 that I've read on 0 plus 1 mod 5. Well, I ended up at Q2 when reading a 0. Plus 1 mod 5 is, I hope, 3. Right? I'm not going to 4 and then overflow. So I should go to Q3 on 1. Okay? So now let's do the other two things. Q2, the remainder is 2 now. If I multiply that number by 2, what's the remainder now? 4, right? So think of the number 2. Multiply it by 2, and then uh, take the remainder of that mod, uh, uh, mod 5. So 2 times 2 is 4, but 4 mod 5 is still 4. Right, that doesn't change. So Q2 on 0 should go to Q4. OK? Where do you think Q2 should go on 1? Back to Q0. Why? It's 1 plus uh, whatever we ended up with 0 mod 5. So what is 4 plus 1? 5. What is 5 mod 5? 0. So we should go to Q0 on 1 from Q2. So all of these problems, like divisible by 5, 6, 7, whatever, is just thinking about the remainders and where they go on reading 0 or 1 or something like that. Any questions on this so far? OK. So we have two more. So let's think about Q3. So the remainder is 3. And I multiply by 2. So what is the remainder now? Well, 3 times 2 is? 6. six. And what is 6 mod 5? 1. One. Right. So where should I go on 0? I go to Q1. 0. Where should I go on 1 from Q3? Well, it's wherever I ended up on 0 plus 1 mod 5. So where did, I, where did I end up? I ended up at Q1. So 1 plus 1 is? Two, I hope. So here I should go to Q2 on 1. OK? Surprisingly little process. That's good. So one more state to go. Q4, if I read a 0, so if I have a remainder 4 and I multiply by 2, I get, so 4 times 2 is? 8. So what is 8 mod 5? 3. So on 0, I should go to Q3. 
And then finally, where should Q4 go on one? Back to itself. Yeah, because it's where I ended up with three, but then I added one, mod five. Three plus one is four, and four mod five is still four. So I should end up back here. Any questions about this? Yeah. So basically, you can have many multiple DFAs for one question. Like you can have multiple states. So do we care about being like this DFA being optimized or having the minimum number of states? Yeah. So this DFA, I don't think you can minimize. But the question of minimal DFAs is very important. But I don't think you can here. But can I? If, are there? Are there more DFAs that I can do for the exact same language? So this is one DFA, but is there another one I can think of? Yeah, yeah. yeah how do I find another one? What's an easy way? Just get rid of one of the self loops, add another state, and then have the have jump to the new state, and then jump back to the original state. But then I might not be accepting the same strings because I'm modifying the transition. I want to make a, another DFA for this language, but I don't want to change this because it looks complicated. So, um, replace one self loops with another final state. But I, I may have a string like uh, one 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 zero, and then but that that would be changing the string for that except. Like, like Yeah, but then I would be changing the strings that I accept. So like the string is one, zero, oh. zero, one would now be accepted. Okay. But, but that number is not, and that wouldn't be, uh, we don't want to accept that. Yeah. Now to get back to the campus at 10.30, where your end is at? This ends at 10.30. This does? Yeah. So how would I uh, make another DFA? Basically, the simplest example, that was 101, yeah, but I want to make another DFA based off this one that is different from this, but it has the exact same strings and stuff. You can add another state, Q5, and from Q0, if you have accepted 0, you can go to Q5. Yeah, but, I, but then uh, I want to make this machine deterministic. I should only have one transition on input zero. Yeah, so instead of going back to Q0, we can have multiple finite, um, finite states. So one being the empty string and another being the Q1. Yeah, but empty string's not a uh, character in the past. But aren't we uh, considering it as divisible by five? Yeah, but it, so it's already implicitly accepted because Q0 is finite state. Yeah, but can we have like, one more finite state, Q5? I, I mean, we could have other final states, yeah. but what do I want of these final states? Well, the machine's deterministic. So let's just say I make Q5 final. Should I be able to reach Q5? Yeah. yeah. Well, if I was able to reach it, then I would have another string that I would, would accept that I didn't hear because this machine's deterministic, right? So what could I do with this state? What if I just did this? Right? I just made a new state that just loops on everything. Does this change the language of this DFA? Does it change the set of strings that it accepts? Well, the machine that was before is unchanged. The only thing I added was a new state, and there's no way to get there. So the strings that accepted are still the same. Could I continue this? Yeah, as many times as I like. So it's just thinking about how many possible DFAs accept a particular language? All right? I think I still have 10 minutes, so any other questions you guys have? Or we can try to think of another example. The purpose of putting a new state like that now. Yeah, the, there isn't much purpose, but it's just realizing that uh, for a particular language, uh, you can have many DFAs accept that particular regular language. Yeah. It's not, it's not you just have one particular DFA that you can make it for it. Any other questions? Or I can come up with another example. Yeah. Can you redefine total function? Yeah, so what was total function? So 
uh, total function was was defined for the transition function. So what are the inputs of this transition function? Current state. Well, I gotta have the state that I was in, the input character that I'm going to read off the input, and then what's the output of a function? Next state. The next state. So we gotta have a state which is a member of Q, and we also have to have a member of sigma, which is the input character. And then the output, as we just said, is a state itself. So we know that this function is total. So how do I define a total function? Intuitively, for the transition table that's now erased, it means that every single entry has, that every single box is filled with some state. But what does it mean formally? It means that no matter what state I pick, no matter what input symbol I read, I always have a state to go to. Right, there's a defined output. So an example of, like if I modify this so that its, it's transition function is not total, I would just delete one of the transitions. Right, so now it's not, it's not true anymore that no matter what state I pick, no matter what input symbol I read, that I do have a defined state because Q2 on one is not defined anymore. But if I add it back, now it is total because every single pair of state with input symbol is defined. Okay, does that answer your question? Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Or do you want me to come up with another example or, or, do, you think, or do you want to be done? Majority vote. How many of you want another example? So it's mainly this side. How many of you want to think that's good enough? I'll do another example. It, it, you'll want more examples later on anyway, so I think it might be a good idea. So now I'll have to think of one. I'll do a really simple one. this language that says I want all the strings such that the number of zeros in the string is even and the number of ones in the string is odd. Okay? It'll turn out that there's a much easier way to understand this, but let's just take it at face value here. So, how do you think I can go about doing this? Well, let's think back here we modeled all the possibilities as, as states, right? So what are all the possibilities here? Well, could it be the case that the number of zeros and ones is both even? That's being fed to me as input. Yeah, I, I don't want to accept that, but that could be a possibility, right? What if it was both odd for zeros and ones? That's another case. Even zeros, odd ones, that's totally possible. And odd zeros, even ones, that's a, another possibility. So I have four possibilities. Let's model each one of them as a state. You see a theme coming about here? It's you make all the possibilities as states. So let's make four states then. I'll make it nice and big, because the names will be kind of big. So I'm going to have four states. What they'll correspond to is uh, even, even. So I'm going to make four states with the names uh, something comma something, where 
The one on the left means the number of zeros is either even or odd. So this will be either or, even or odd, this will be even or odd, but the second one means it's corresponding to the one. Zero. So let's think of the force of possibilities. So I can have even odd. This could be odd even. And this one is both odd. All right. So it specifies states. What is the start state? Even, even. Even, even, right? Because I've read zero characters, it's even in both cases. So that's the start state. What should be the final state? Even odd. Right. I want zeros uh, to be even and ones odd. So I want even odd to be the final state. I don't want any other one. All right. So now let's do the transitions. So if I'm in even, even, and I see a zero, what happens? Well, well let's think. This even is now going to change to an odd, but what about this even over here? It's still even, right? What about down here? It's going to go to even, even. So when I see a zero, I'm going to go to the corresponding one where the first guy changes and the other one stays the same. Okay? So this one says even. I'm going to go to odd even, which is down here. Odd even, I'm going to go to even even on zero. Odd odd, I better go to even odd. So it goes here. And I bet you can guess even odd goes to odd odd. All right, pretty simple. What about the one transitions? What is this guy going to go to on one? Even odd. Even odd, right? Because it's the ones where the first guy stays the same and the second one changes. So uh, this guy's going to go to even odd, which is over here. Where do you think this guy's going to go? Even, even. <laughs> even, even, right? Because it's the second one that changes. And what do you think these two are going to do? It's essentially the same thing as up here. It only changes the, the second coordinate. So odd even is going to go to odd odd. And odd odd is going to go back to even odd even. So we're actually starting to get kind of complicated behavior here. That we can think about the number of zeros and the number of ones in terms of parity of the number of zeros and ones. Any questions about any of this? I think that's a good place to stop, so I'll see you next week.